We've already taken a quick overview of the roof by extrusion tool in a previous unit, but now I want to go through that workflow again in a lot more detail. So if I just switch to a 3D view, you can see our simple sample building. We're going to put an extruded roof on here. So I'm going to switch back to a plan view for now. Now, when we did the quick overview of the roof by extrusion tool, you'll recall we had to pick a work plane on which to sketch the profile. When I do the process again now, instead of actually sketching that profile of the roof onto a, uh, an existing plane, i.e. the face of a wall, I'm going to use a couple of reference planes I'm going to create a reference plane on which to create or sketch the profile but I'm also going to use that reference plane and another one to control the start and end of the extruded roof. So first thing I want to do is set up these two reference planes. So on the architecture menu, the end panel there, work plane, reference plane. Click a start point, click an end point. Going to do the same at the end of the roof. Now, in order to use these reference planes to sketch your roof profile on, it's important that you give them a name. So, if I select the first reference plane I produced, you can either click to name it straight in the view. Or if you have a look at its properties, it has an instance parameter called name where you can actually store a name against each particular reference plane. So I'm going to call this one Reef Start. And likewise for the other side, I'm going to name that one Reef End. As I just said, I'm actually going to use these to control the start and end point of the roof. Um, so if you were doing this for real, let's say you're putting a waveform roof over your leisure center, for example, you'll probably want this overhang to be a specific distance. So if I click on that there, let's say it's 800 mil. Put that into the temporary dimension. Now, if I click the little dimension icon underneath the temporary dimension it converts it into a permanent dimension I select that dimension again I can lock it so what we're doing now is setting up a constraint whereby that reference plane will always be 800 mil away from the external wall that's really useful if you're still developing your model and these uh, wall positions might still move so we can adjust that now knowing that the roof overhang of 800 mil will always be maintained likewise let's do that for the end plane so select the reference plane that brings up the temporary dimension click in its value change the value and enter it convert that temporary dimension while it's still selected into a permanent dimension select the permanent dimension click the padlock icon to lock it and to form that constraint so we've got our two reference planes both at a set distance away from the external walls to create our predefined overhang We've named the reference planes. We can now begin the process of actually creating the extruded roof. So, architecture menu, the build panel, roof, we hit the little drop down, roof by extrusion. You'll remember this work plane panel from the previous unit. We've got three options by which we can uh, pick a work plane on which to sketch our roof profile. We can either pick a name of a work plane, which we're going to do in a second. We can just pick a plane in our model. That's what we did in the previous unit when we uh, hovered over the external walls to find a face or a plane. Or we can pick a line and it will actually work out what work plane was used to sketch that line initially and it will 
then use that work plane. So for now, we're going to switch to name, hit the little drop down, and there are our two reference planes. Now, as I just said before, it's important if you're going to use this method that you give those reference planes a name. If we hadn't have named them, even though they were in the model, they wouldn't have appeared in this drop down, hence we couldn't have accessed them. So roof start, it's okay. Revit is now saying to us, it can use that work plane then, roof start, on which to sketch the roof profile, but it's gonna to need to switch to a different view so we can actually see the work plane in order to sketch on it. So let's switch to a west view, open it. Revit now asks us which level in our model do we want this roof to be referenced from. It's currently set to level two, it's picked the highest one there. Uh, you can see level two from the previous unit is floating up in the air. I'm actually going to change that down to level one. Any offset that you might want to apply to that, either positive or negative, can be added in here. I'm going to stick with zero, hit OK. We're now in sketch mode. We sketch out the top profile of our roof. Now we can use any of the tools in the draw palette here. Notice for roof by extrusion, there is no pick walls tool. You remember on the roof by footprint, we had an extra icon there. It's just not applicable uh, for the use of this tool. There is though the pick lines tool. So if you are trying to recreate, let's say, a shape of a roof that you've got in, already in AutoCAD in a DWG format, you could bring that in as a backdrop and then you could use uh, the pick lines tool there to detect the lines. If you've got any other sort of curves or shapes already in your model, again, you can use that pick lines tool to automatically create the boundary from those existing elements. I haven't got anything in here to work from, so I'm going to sketch it out manually. I'm going to use that three point arc again and sketch out my roof like that. Now, the most crucial part of producing this sketch is to note that you are only sketching out the top surface of your roof. Notice that I am not going round and creating a closed loop. Intuition, I think, would tell you um, or make you think that this needs to be a closed loop because most other sketches in sketch mode in Revit require a closed loop, uh, but roof by extrusion and also sketching railings on a path actually preclude you from forming a closed loop. So this is purely the upper surface of our roof. I just zoom in a little here. When Revit goes to create the 3D geometry, depending on the roof type you pick, it will create its layers coming down from this top surface here. So really important to note, do not form a closed loop here or it just will not work. Just as with the roof by footprint, we can choose our roof type now from either the basic roof group or the sloped glazing roof group show you slope glazing in the next unit. These auto desk uh, roof types here, uh, some are named pitch, some are just generic. Revit is not bothered which roof type you apply. So let's go with that one there. Notice down in the instance parameters, slope is now greyed out. It's not appropriate for an extruded roof. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the green tick to create the roof. As we said before, the 3D geometry is built up or down, if you like, from the upper surface that you sketched out. Let's switch to a 3D view. There is our extruded roof. Notice some of the walls are sticking through. Now, if I switch to a plan view. The roof starts on the first reference plane, the one we call roof start. However, currently the roof ends on the back wall of the building. That's because Revit will detect the furthest most wall in your project. We actually want it to extend 
or be extruded to the second reference plane we can easily do that by selecting the roof and you get the little push-pull grip there just hover over hold your left mouse button drag it till it snaps to the reference plane then close the little padlock icon to place that constraint and lock it to the reference plane so now we have an extruded roof which has its start and end controlled by reference planes which in turn are controlled by the position of the external walls beneath so let's go back to our 3d view let's tidy up the external walls how they meet the roof so select everything in the model filter really useful tool we've only got two categories of elements in this simple model but I'm just interested in the walls once you've got just the wall selected then you have the option on the ribbon to attach the top and the base then you can simply hover over the model it will detect the roof now and it will attach the top of those walls to the underside of the roof element the last thing I want to show you in this particular unit is cutting out apertures or trimming down portions of the roof for the extruded roof where they're redundant so if we go back you'll remember there is a cutout here uh, a rebate if you like in the building where it returns so obviously if your design includes a, a big canopy over an external area you might want to just keep the roof as it is but for the sake of this example I'm going to cut away at this portion of the roof now the way to do that is first of all you create the extruded roof in its entirety as we've done here see we've come out of sketch mode we've created the geometry the roof is finished but what we do now is add the openings or the cutaways separately so just go back and select the roof that you've created and now you will see on the ribbon there is the option to add a vertical opening so I click on that Revit goes back into sketch mode and I can now sketch out the aperture or the opening or the portion of roof basically that I want to cut away from the one that we've created so I'm going to do something a little bit fancy just to show you that you're not stuck by simple rectangular openings let's do a, an arc there now this does require a closed loop notice how it doesn't matter if my closed loop actually spans over the edge of the roof what what Revit will do is just cut away the portion that's applicable obviously if I do a closed loop using that vertical opening tool that sits wholly inside the perimeter of the roof then you will get a traditional roof aperture but if you want to notch away at parts of the edge of the roof uh, it doesn't matter if your sketch then overhangs and goes off the edge so we've got a closed loop hit the green tick and Revit cuts away there you can actually see it's I missed the external wall a little bit I'll just push that back there tuck that under switch to our 3d view we spin that round there is our cutaway from the main roof just going to go back to our roof plan so the main things to note about the roof by extrusion tool is that the profiles can be quite complex shapes as you've seen you can make those up with curved straight lines etc but the path it takes is always a linear straight path at 90 degrees to the plane that the profile is drawn in so our profile was drawn on this reference plane which means that the extrusion will always be at 90 degrees from that you can't sort of skew that extrusion so it goes off at an angle but what you can do however is once you've created that basic roof is you can start to refine it in terms of its shape and plan by adding vertical openings so you can imagine you could have a, a sort of gentle arc along the edge here by notching away at that or you can stagger the sort of notches in and out along the building line as you need to 
This tutorial is taken from the Revit Roofs Masterclass online training course. For the full itinerary detailing everything that's covered in this course, please visit bimscape.com forward slash courses.